Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Seale, Fetal Trained Spine Surgeon. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about the surgical treatment and outcomes of Cauda Syndrome. In our prior episode, we talked about what the symptoms and causes are of Cauda Syndrome. As a reminder, Cauda Syndrome typically happens when there's a disc herniation, so the donut layer, the jelly donut tears, and the jelly, which is the screen stuff, comes out and it hits the cauda equina, and it causes issues related to saddle anesthesia, buttock and leg pain with weakness, loss of bowel control, loss of bladder control, as well as sexual dysfunction. Cauda equina syndrome is one of the only things that are a surgical emergency in the lower lumbar spine, aside some really bad spinal fractures. Cauda equina syndrome requires surgery within 24 to 48 hours to take the pressure off of the nerves that are supp supplying the bowel and bladder in order to get some restoration of bowel and bladder function. There's lots of great studies that show that surgery needs to be done within 48 hours, and here's a good study looking at 322 patients, which really shows that if you have cauda equina syndrome, you really have to take pressure off the nerves within 48 hours to have a good outcome. There's really only one surgery for cauda equina syndrome, and that's a decompression or a partial laminectomy to take pressure off of the sac that the cauda equina is in, and also doing a discectomy, which is taking that large piece of disc off of the nerve. So partial laminectomy involves making a small incision in the back and we expose, in this, in this case, L4, L5, and we remove a small amount of bone in order to take pressure off of the nerves and off of the cauda equina, and once we expose the nerves, we move the nerve aside and take that big piece of disc or jelly off of the jelly donut. We don't have to remove the whole disc, just the piece that's extruded out to give freedom to the cauda equina. And we do this with small instruments like burrs and little dental instruments. Cauda equina syndrome almost never requires a fusion operation with rod screws and cages. Of course, every case is unique, but in the vast majority of cases, a decompressive partial laminectomy with a discectomy is enough very few patients will need a fusion operation for cauda equina syndrome. So what are the risks of the laminectomy and discectomy? The first is the dural tear. The nerves swim in fluid, and that fluid is by, covered by a thin sac of sinus saran wrap. If there's scarring of the disc or the bone spur to the sac, as we take the bone spur off of the sac, that sac could tear and spinal fluid leaks out. It's not a big deal. We repair it, we glue it shut. We have to lay patients flat for one or two days, and the laser recovery does not change the ultimate outcome of surgery. Chance of dural tear is less than 5%. Another risk is the risk of nerve injury, so we're working around the nerves, and there can be injury to those nerves that can lead to increased pain, weakness, etc. Thankfully, because it's a peripheral nerve that almost always recovers, and we are monitoring the nerve the whole time, there's a neurological monitoring individual that's in the room watching the nerves while we operate, so we know if there's something going on with the nerve. There's a chance of infection less than 1%, and of course, we're not fixing that level permanently. We're not using rod screws and cages, so you can have recurrent disc herniation, which is more disc coming out, which is a real risk. You can develop instability, fracture, etc. We're not permanently fixing that level. We're just taking the pressure off of the cauda equina and doing a discectomy. I limit my patients to less than 10 pounds of lifting for the first six weeks. I don't want pressure on the disc so that more jelly comes out. I also limit sitting for less than 10 minutes at a time. So if you sit for 10 minutes, which is the worst position for increasing and squeezing down on the disc so that more jelly can come out, I ask that patients stand up for one or two seconds to decompress their spine, and then they can sit back down. And that's for the first six weeks, just to prevent recurrent disc herniation. What are the benefits of a decompressive laminectomy and discectomy for cauda equina syndrome? The first is reduction of buttock and leg pain. There's a 90% chance of taking away the majority of the buttock and leg pain. The majority is more than half. The most important thing to understand is that surgery is not perfect, is not gonna make you have a pain of nine to zero there's almost always some permanent nerve injury that's already occurred there. So it is more often than not that patients do have to live with some residual buttock and leg pain. That buttock and leg pain seldom goes to zero. If we can take away the majority or more than half, to me that's a win. So if we can take somebody from a pain score of an eight to a three, you may still have some leg pain that's bothersome, but your quality of life is gonna be much better and a leg pain of three may not be interfering with quality of life. Recovery of strength as well as numbness is extremely variable. I usually tell patients there's a 50-50 chance that strength and numbness improve, and that's because that's a very sensitive part of the nerve. Now, the biggest outcome that you're looking for is improvement in bladder function, as well as bowel function and sexual function. That's very, very variable, and it can take up to one year to 16 months to see 
how much control you have back with the bowel, the bladder, and sexual function. Here's a great meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is something where we can pool a bunch of patients. In this situation, this study looked at 825 patients across 22 studies. And first and foremost, they showed that, again, surgery within 48 hours leads to better outcomes. But more importantly, they showed that at an average of three years after surgery, 30 to 50% of patients still had some persistent issues with bladder control, bowel control, sexual dysfunction, weakness, as well as numbness. So even if you get to that disc early, it doesn't mean you're gonna have full recovery. So that really lends for patients to understand the importance of getting to surgery early for Cauda-Quina syndrome. Here's a patient of mine, he's uh, 39. He first started having buttock and leg pain, did not have other symptoms of Cauda-Quina. Um, and then called our office, said that he started leaking some urine. So obviously got very concerned, sent him to the emergency room. We get this MRI, you can see there's a massive disc herniation L5S1 here. The donut layer tore the jelly spit out. It's occupying his entire canal. You can't even see the nerves. So we took him to surgery uh, immediately the next morning. And here you'll see the disc that was uh, pushing on his nerve. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something about Cauda-Quina syndrome, the surgical treatment, as well as the outcomes. If you do have symptoms of Cauda-Quina syndrome, get immediately in front of a spine surgeon. You have 48 hours for the spine surgeon to take the pressure off of the Cauda-Quina so you do get some recovery of bladder and bowel control as well as sensation. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button and thanks for watching.